been very concerned over the years, of course, that beyond just energy efficiency, how do you actually provide the future source of firewood and charcoal? So we'd had a tree planting program, the traditional type of digging holes and getting those little saplings and plastic bags. After doing many years of that type of planting, we started realizing we need a way to do it cheaper if you're going to do it on a very, very large scale. And our first hurdle was when we'd thrown, we went and bought a bunch of seeds from the Kenya Forest Service, uh, scattered them out, and then noticed most of the seeds, of course, in nature, uh, get eaten. That's when I thought about my friend Elson, and I asked him, could you come up with a way to use this old charcoal dust to coat the next generation of trees that are going back to be planted in all of these areas that have been deforested for so long? Seed balls are what the name suggests. It's a seed uh, in a ball. Uh, what we use is reclaimed charcoal waste uh, to coat different types of indigenous tree seeds and grass seeds as well uh, for a landscape restoration around Kenya. So we partner with as many people who could build seed distribution into their existing logistics chains. And so whether that's conservation pilots who maybe are doing patrols for ivory poachers or illegal loggers, if they're able to take seeds up with them when they're flying and drop the right type in the right place, or all the way down to school kids going on trips, to church groups, I mean, cycling uh, groups have gotten into it. So, so far to date in the four years that we've been doing this, we've seen really exponential growth and we've just surpassed our 13th million seed ball. Now in year four, we're starting to get a lot of good feedback from different partners on what success rate they're seeing. Even at a minimum of 5% of all of those seeds distributed have become trees. That's a huge step because in a lot of the places where we're trying to regrow and enhance the biodiversity that was, a lot of those species, like the acacia tortilles, is a very hard quality wood that's overexploited for charcoal production. And being able to get one or two of those mother trees back into certain ecosystems, that's really, really key for being able to help protect and have that one start producing more seeds 10, 20, 30 years down the line. At the moment, it's incredible. You know, wake up and you get uh, feedback and photos on what's up from seven different parts of the country. And there are people planting more indigenous trees. So that's been a very, very big step for us, just that pure reach of being able to get people excited about tree planting and have it be a really fun thing that like growing trees is, you know, like you're laughing and maybe using a slingshot and, you know, rather than for a lot of people, or at least my generation maybe, it was punishment in school. You know, if you did something wrong, you had to go carry buckets of water to the trees and stuff. So I think this giving a different message to kids that one day they can use a drone or fly a helicopter and throw out millions of, you know, uh, suddenly got so exciting for so many people who we've been involved with. Almost every week, um, just through like WhatsApp or email, we're getting requests from people from India, from Northern Macedonia. I mean, I hate to admit it, even places I've never heard of, Moldova, <laughs> um, you know, Mexico to Philippines to all over the world that people who've seen this and are obviously passionate about growing trees and would like to try it out. I've felt the need, let's reach out. People ask, could we buy some of the seed balls? And we tell everyone, just make sure the biggest key thing to all of this is using indigenous local tree seed. So it's very, very um, satisfying for all of us to see how far something like this is actually, you know, plant a seed, it's actually gone across the world. <laughs>